Check, check, one, two. Is this record lights on? Awesome. Hello, and welcome to the very first episode of Between the Bellows. My name is Marcus, and today is a very special day for me because being in front of a camera is very new to me. I'm usually way more comfortable behind the camera, but I'm very excited to be making content and sharing it with you all. So today I'm kicking off the series with a story on Alex Nelson, a craftsman who designs custom lenses for motion pictures. He started a company here in California called Zero Optic. And what they do is they take a rare vintage still photography lenses and they rehouse, retweak, and modify them to be used in cinema. So things like TV shows, commercials, and feature films. So today after this, I'm gonna be going to take Alex's portrait at the Zero Optic office. But then while we're there, we'll get a peek behind the curtain to see how things work. We'll be inside today. So I have two eight by 10 sheets of Kodak Tri-X 320 film loaded, one for his portrait and one for good luck. So enough talking, let's go meet Alex. I'm Alex Nelson. Uh, we are in the Zero Optic offices in Glendale, California. I was working as a camera assistant and I couldn't afford the vintage lenses that people were starting to use more and more for digital cinematography. So I wanted to see if I could make something myself that would, that would accomplish the same thing. So I was using primarily still lenses. Anything that was marketed originally as a cinema lens was out of my reach. So I was looking for mostly like antique cook lenses, stuff for large format, medium format, and, and trying to repurpose those for cinematography. You know, it was just interesting to kind of engage with that kind of design process and, and learn to machine things, learn to make things from scratch. Vintage lenses are really fascinating because you often get a level of, of character, of kind of um, like funk almost, that is impossible to achieve with, with modern lenses. Uh, you see a lot of cinematographers opting for, for vintage glass because if you use a really modern lens, it's, it doesn't flare, it's got really high contrast. It can end up making whatever it is you're shooting look like a football game or a soap opera. The vintage lenses we build, that we you know, work with or modify, they kind of put a little layer of like magic between the, the viewer and, and what you're shooting. Are, are people, DPs or whoever, do they have like a favorite still photography lens? Or like, I love how this renders in still images. How can I translate this to motion, live action? Is that kind of those conversations happen to you? We get a, a lot of cinematographers who have a, a favorite, either lens manufacturer, still lens manufacturer, or in some cases, a favorite photographer who maybe used to use a certain kind of lens. So they'll come to us hoping to turn that kind of alchemical magic into something that they can, they can shoot a whole movie with or shoot a TV show with. They want to build something into the images they're creating that is specific to them. Uh, we get asked more and more about these sort of mix and match sets of lenses rather than, than hewing to just one manufacturer, just, you know, Canon or Nikon or Leica. Um, they'll hand pick lenses, focal length by focal length from different manufacturers to put together something that, uh, a set that's just off the shelf couldn't possibly. The most rewarding part is probably the, the design process itself. It's, it's finding clever ways to kind of solve these mechanical problems, to take lenses that were never designed to be incorporated into cinematography and find ways to, to sort of elevate them to the, the level that our clients expect.
So I've had the privilege of using zero optic lenses on my own projects in the past. And I gotta say, I just love that these old lenses that you can't find anymore have a new life. They're still making great images and they're working today. And I think it's also important that there are more flavors and options of lenses that are accessible to filmmakers at any level. So that wraps up the first episode of Between the Bellows. Thank you so much for watching. If you want to see more of these stories, please support the channel, like, subscribe, and tell a friend. And if you want to see more of my own still photography work, you can connect with me on Instagram at yourpelmarcus. Thanks.